Looks like a recession may be coming. Are you ready for it? Hey, Provident Preppers, I'm Kayleen. And I'm Jonathan, and today we're talking about all things financial. Of course, we're all struggling a little bit with inflation, which is starting to bite pretty hard. And we don't realize it until we look at it over maybe an annual basis, and they're saying $5,500 for the average family. It's going to cost that much more to maintain the same standard of living. Now we're talking about a good possibility of a recession. Um, some are saying this is going to be a tough one. Some are saying, yeah, it's going to be touch and go. But whatever it is, let's take some steps right now so that we can be resilient regardless of what may come. So one of the questions that we are being asked most frequently from our audience right now is how do you prepare for a recession? And so Jonathan and I sat down and we brainstormed and we came up with 10 action items or 10 steps that make sense for every one of us to take so that we can be prepared whether or not a recession strikes. It just makes good sense. And the first one is to sit down and critically evaluate our standard of living, right? Are there ways that we can reduce some of the expenditures so that we can increase the amount of disposable income that we have? And this can be kind of a painful process. Actually, when we do this, it, it's not really happy yeah. for us. Because while we are united in a lot of things, Jonathan and I have different things that are important to us. And so we recognize that it can be a source of frustration. But it's a really good um, thing for you to sit down and, and just do this. So look at things, for instance, what about your housing? Um, are you upside down in your housing? Would it make sense for you to um, downsize a little bit or does it just make sense to stay where you're at how about um, your food do you need to maybe go out to eat a little bit less um, how about take sack lunches into work or um, learn to cook from scratch right do more of the basics are there things that you can do to reduce your food um, outlay right um, because that you know housing is a huge piece food is a huge piece of your budget and then how about transportation is it possible that you have a car that maybe it would make sense to sell it right now and to buy something that's a little bit more economical? Maybe you take public transportation more often. You walk, you ride a bike, or you carpool places. Do things to combine your trips so that they're, they're reduced, right? And we don't quite, with gas, it's so expensive right now. Um, I think a lot of us are looking at things like that. But those, those are some of the areas that I think are important. Digital entertainment, that's a place that we've, we've totally been able to find it. Do you really need to have cable? How many subscriptions do you have? Maybe, maybe it's time to cancel some of them or to look at something different. Um, how about grooming, right? How much are you spending on doing your hair and nails? Um, is it time to learn how to cut hair yourself, right? Um, that could be disastrous for some of us. And for others, it, you know, it, it works okay. So just look at all these different um, areas and think what you can do to reduce the expenditures that you have every month. And if you click the card in the corner, it will take you to a post that we just posted that outlines a whole bunch of these different areas in your budget that you might want to look at. Basically, what we're going to do is do a little bit of triage and decide, yeah, what do we save? What do we let go? And then we have that extra cash that can take us a long ways towards an emergency fund, other important things. And we can do it, right? We can just do remember, this. you also want to stay married, and some things are a sacred cow, and you just need to tiptoe away from those. Our second step is proactively managing debt. Now, in an ideal world, we're free of debt. We get rid of all of our debt, and that's not a problem. But that, for most people, that is not reality. Most of us have a little bit of debt hanging out there, and deciding how to manage that is important. Now, sometimes you have a debt that's just not going to be paid off for a long time. So maybe you're better off, instead of making extra payments on that, if you don't have an emergency fund, it might be better to put that money in an to an emergency fund so that if there is a problem, you've got that cushion to help you pay that debt. Now, if you aren't going to be able to pay some of your debts, we encourage you to get with your, with your lender, whoever that is, 
and let them know. They're a lot more willing to work with you if, if you're upfront and you're working with them, you're trying to do everything you can and create a payment plan or whatever that looks like, they're much more likely to, to be your friend and help you out. And pay off, like, so if you get stuck one month, right, and you just can't meet all your bills, make sure that you make, you like, your housing payment first or anything that's attached to... Um, Collateral. Collateral, yeah, in the yeah. word. Collateral, because that's going to do the most damage. You can push off credit card payments if you have to. You can push off, like, you could do medical and dental payments. Usually, they are really good to work with you if you make a token payment every month and they see that you're consistent. So even if that means that you can only do $10 a month, if you communicate with them, sometimes they will work with you. So make sure that you don't put it off. You can't hide from your debt. So make sure that you're upfront and honorable about it and communicate with them and see what they can do. Step number three is make sure that you have an emergency fund. Now, we just mentioned that a moment ago, but I can't emphasize enough how important an emergency fund is. And you have to start wherever you are, but you want to build that and build that as much as you can. If you can get six to 12 months of expenses in an emergency fund, you've bought yourself a whole lot of time. I'm looking back to 2008 and I watched a lot of people go under and most of that was because they didn't have an emergency fund. When things got bad, they had nowhere to turn. If you've got an emergency fund, you buy yourself time to get things figured out. And sometimes that's all you need is a little bit of time. So make sure that you work on that emergency fund. Start wherever you are and build it up. Number four is to diversify your skills and improve your job skills. So let's think about this for a second from an employer's point perspective, right? Um, if it comes time for layoffs and they have a choice, sometimes your employer just doesn't have a, a choice and they just have to lay off everybody. But um, when cuts are coming, if you have made yourself really valuable because you've offered to do extra jobs or whatever, learn different areas of the company, um, if you're a hard worker and dependable, you are one of the last ones that's gonna go. You need to make yourself as valuable as you possibly can to your employer so that they'll want to keep you when those really hard decisions come. And then if you're a super good worker, then even if they have to lay you off, hopefully they'll be able to give you a really good letter of recommendation that maybe will land you another job. Number five is to build a skill set outside of what you're normally doing. This provides you an opportunity to serve others and to make an income doing, doing some other skill, probably something that you already know how to do or that you love, a hobby, whatever that is, you can turn that into a skill that's very valuable. So I look at it from our perspective. We've raised a lot of children with a very small income. We've had one income and yet we've been able to do it really well, but it's because we've learned how to do all kinds of things so we didn't have to get outside labor. So if there was a construction project that needed to be done, Jonathan learned how to do it himself. He did the wiring for this whole house, right? When we built this house, I laid every single piece of tile in this house. Um, I learned to cook from scratch and be able to um, grow our own garden and preserve our own food and, and all kinds of different skills that aren't, aren't just your normal skills. In order to survive, we had to learn to do a lot of things ourselves. And because of that, it actually made it so that we're not afraid to try other tasks, right? Um, Jonathan does a really good job of repairing cars with a couple of our boys because they have a higher skill level than he does, but he doesn't have any issue at all rolling up his sleeves and getting in there and taking things apart so that we don't have to pay a repairman to fix things like that. So think about the skills that you can develop and don't be afraid to try something new. Number six is build a food reserve. Now this is something that obviously we have preached for years and years and years, but your food supply can provide you with so much stability, so much ability to weather the storms of inflation or recession, whatever may come, you have that food in reserve. And as always, we encourage you to have a three month supply of everyday foods, just things that you always eat. And then at a longer term supply of foods that are mostly tucked away, but you can still be using them, but foods that will sustain you for a long period of time, provide you nutrients and energy um, to, to make sure that you stay healthy. So build that food supply. And okay, so we had 
11 children, right? Well, we have 11 children. Um, they don't all live at home anymore. But um, it was really hard to feed all of those children because can you imagine how much those teenagers ate? And then it's not just them, but the basketball team comes over to it and they wipe us out of food, right? And so we, we were able to build our food supply even with that huge outlay. And why, how were we able to do it? because we learned to cook with basic ingredients. And food storage isn't expensive if you're talking about storing basic dry goods. And then you learn how to use them. And we, you know, we bottle our own foods. And it's just amazing how inexpensively you can eat if you'll just learn how to do it, right? If you'll take that risk and do something unknown. I have so many friends that are terrified of cooking dry beans and friends that are amazing in so many different things that they do, but they're afraid of these dry beans. And seriously, it's not that hard. If you wanna click the card in the corner, I'll take you to a video that we created that shows you how to cook dry beans. You can do this, but if we're talking about doing it economically, right? And helping out with a recession, that means that we need to lower our food costs. And your food storage is a huge way to be able to do that. Number seven, and this will not surprise you, grow your own food. Whether it's a little windowsill pot with lettuce in it or uh, tomatoes out on your balcony or a garden like our giant garden, whatever it is, you can do this. You can grow some of your own food and that provides a lot of security. And quite frankly, Jonathan sounds really energetic around about this, but he's not really a gardener. He doesn't really like it that much. It's, he's like... It's pretty good. <laughs> I find great joy in it, right? Oh, it's her um, passion. But he's my muscles and, and he'll help me to create whatever it is that I need to create and to do the muscle work behind it. Um, and he does love to harvest and we work alongside each other like when we do the tomato juice and stuff. Um, it's really nice because we definitely are a team as we do that. But as you grow your own food, there is such freedom in that knowing that you can just continually produce more food you're not limited anything that i've stored eventually it's going to run out but the things that the produce that i produce in my garden will go year after year after year so make sure that even if you can only do a little bit even if you can just plant a fruit tree right now or plant some berry bushes think about ways to get starts from people we have a huge garden which means that we have the ability to share starts with people if one of our friends needs some raspberry starts it's really easy for us to share and that costs our friends nothing but as we work together as a community we'll find things to be able to do that we produce more food than what our um, we can eat right and so we can share with friends. If somebody wants to come and work in our garden, we are just fine sharing with them. So think about that as you're thinking about how you can grow your own food, whether it's in a community garden, or if you need to make friends with somebody like us where you might not have the resources because you live in an apartment, but you could come and help and still benefit from that garden. Number eight is to build a home cottage industry. Some kind of business that you can do from your home. Um, sometimes like Benjamin refers to it as a side hustle. Some way that you can make some kind of money or have another stream of income coming in. And it doesn't, like your, your home cottage industry, it doesn't have to be one business. You could do a few different things. You could do computer repair as well as sell eggs in your neighborhood. Um, you could cut hair as well as do dog grooming. Or th There's such a huge variety of things that you could do to make a little bit of extra money at home that could make all the difference. Now, when we're talking about a business being recession-proof, though, there's something that I think is really important to consider. We're not making some beautiful little trinket and selling it. This is probably not a good time to start selling jewelry because during a recession, there are certain things that are going to not be in high demand, but things like food um, and basics that you need, like getting your hair cut, right? I might be able to cut some of my family's hair, but other ones I can't because I don't have that skill set. But I can barter with somebody right? I can trade with somebody for some of those services. So think about something that your family can do that will meet the demands of the community around you. Number nine is community. 
And we just talked a little bit about that, but it's so important that we start right now, that we reach out, that we get to know our neighbors, that we get to know like-minded people, people that we could barter with, people that we can, you know, trade skills with, whatever this looks like, find people now that you can be friends with, that you can build community with. Uh, community is so important to us. The ability to have lots of people in our community with different skills and abilities that all help each other to make things function well. So we kind of look at it like somebody who has your back, right? And those kinds of relationships start now. They don't just happen overnight. You have to put energy and effort into them to build it. But let's think about this. Say in your community, you purposefully decide that, hey, this person has medical skills, that's something that I might need, and you build a relationship with them. Or this person is an auto mechanic, or this person you know, has all these different skills that you could trade for. But on that, you have to be a valuable member of that community too. I have to have skills that I can offer and not just weigh down that community. And so building these friendships is so important for everyday life, but when times get really tough, it's even more valuable. And speaking of number 10, which is go play, this is a great way to be able to build friendships, um, is to just play with people, right? So have somebody over for dessert and games, or um, go to the park, or go to a game with them, or find ways to be able to play and build those relationships. And the reason why playing is number 10 is because life can just get way too heavy and too tough, right? We are looking out at the horizon and we see this massive storm coming. And so we get all, all uptight, right? And we're running around trying to batten down the hatches and do everything that we can so that when the storm hits, we're gonna be okay. But if we get too uptight and there's too much anxiety going on, it, it's not going to do anybody any good. We want a reason to live. We want to be able to be in a mindset where we can be cheerful, right? Where we can say, okay, I know this is coming, but we're going to make it through this. And the way that we do that is to be able to play. You know, play games with your family. Invite friends over. Watch a good comedy and laugh till your sides hurt and you start to cry. It's good for you. It's good to relax. So when we find ourselves getting too uptight over all this, I have to, I have to remind Jonathan. And I have to remind her it's sometimes. Time, it's time to just relax. It's time to let it go. Now that doesn't mean there's not a time to work. There is. There's things to be done. But make sure that you don't forget how important it is to play. So what we're really talking about here is balance then. Balance. Balance. Something and balance you don't is, achieve very well. Yeah, we're, we're still working on that. But it's so important in our lives to have a balance to um, cover all the bases but not overdo any one of them. And sometimes that's difficult to do, but we challenge you to do it. Start preparing today, right? First thing you've got to do is go and make that list. Now, honestly, there's not a ton of stuff that you need to buy. There are a few things that really make sense, but for the most part, what you're doing is you're kind of reordering your life, right? You're going to cut out the things that aren't necessary, right? That are weighing you down or consuming resources that really aren't a good place or to spend your money or your time, right? You're gonna really critically evaluate that and you're gonna go through and get the things that you need to be able to maintain life, right? Just the basics. And you're gonna play. And you're gonna do some playing. So now the question of the day, what are you doing to help prepare yourselves for a time when recession might hit? Comment below. And thanks for being part of the solution.